Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part seven of my statistics tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to talk about regression and how we can use correlation coefficient, which we've talked about previously, to verify if our regression work is actually going to be useful or not. Don't worry more on that soon. And I'm going to take you through a slide show that's going to explain some things. And then I'm going to show you how to write all the code to create linear regression lines and a whole bunch more. So I have a lot to do. So let's get into it. Okay, so basically regression analysis is used to examine the relationship between two or more variables. It's extremely important, especially in regards to data science and machine learning, because it allows you to take a ton, literally an unlimited number of samples, and then chart out averages and dramatically simplify your results. And you're going to use it to determine which factors matter the most and which factors can be ignored. Now, the dependent variable is what you want to better understand, while the independent variable is what does or doesn't affect your dependent variable. So for example, if I had a movie theater and we wanted to improve customer satisfaction, Customer satisfaction would be the dependent variable, and while the independent variables that would affect it may be things like sound quality, picture quality, seat comfort, the quality of the food, or the overall price. And what you can see here is a regression scatter plot. And well, this is a regression line, and this is a scatter plot of different samples on the xy axis. And you can see this is just a linear equation, just like any other linear equation. You're going to have your slope times x plus b, and b o in this situation is going to represent the intercept or the y intercept, where your line is going to intercept the y axis. This is our regression line, as I said previously. The slope is going to come in here, just like it does here with any other linear equation, and it's going to be multiplied by the value of x. And then you're also going to have epsilon, which is going to be an error estimation, but for the most part, we ignore it. And basically what we're going to be doing here is using the ordinary least squares method for creating our regression line. And like I said, we're basically just going to minimize the different samples to estimate our unknowns. And basically what we're doing is if we have our samples represented with DO, D1, D2, we want to minimize those and we want to take those samples and push them up and average them out to make an overall straight line. Now to calculate B1, which is going to be our slope, what we're going to do is take the sum of all the values of X minus all the mean of X multiplied by Y minus the mean of Y for all values of Y. And then we're going to find the product of those two values and then divide by the sum of x minus x bar squared. And of course x bar is going to be the same as the mean of all the x values. And then once you find b1, of course you can come in and find the y-intercept from that just by using one value of x and one value of y with your known slope, which you just calculated here. Don't worry, I'm going to show you all the code for doing all this. Okay, so here is a very specific example on how you could calculate a linear regression line. And I'm using an example here where we are going to have temperatures and sales per month. And my hypothesis, or my null hypothesis, is as temperatures rise across the course of the year, that my sales are going to increase in kind. So what I need to do is get all my values of X as well as Y and I'm going to go and find the means for both of those. So for X bar, it's 61, and for Y bar, the mean is 400. Then if I go and get the total sum by parsing in each individual value of X minus the mean and each value of Y minus the mean of Y, I get a total value of 3,199. I can then go and do the same for the denominator and get a value of 19,064. Now with both of those values, I can come in and calculate my slope at 5.958. If I plug in 5.958 over here, I get my y-intercept is 35.56. And you can see then what I did was I went in, put in the linear regression line. The values of X are going to be exactly the same. However, the values of Y are going to be generated with that linear equation. And you can see all those new values here. 
But how do we find out if our regression line is a good fit for our data? Well, we do that with something we have already covered, which is the correlation coefficient. Now, remember that the correlation coefficient is going to calculate whether the values of x and y are related or correlated. And we calculate it by finding the covariance of x and y, and then divide by the product of the standard deviations of x and y. Then, if our value is close to 1, then the data is highly correlated, which means our regression line should have an easy time modeling our data. So let's work through an example where we find the correlation coefficient. First, we have to come in and calculate the covariance for all the x and y values. And that is going to work out to 1733. And now that we have the covariance, we can divide it by the standard deviation of x multiplied by the standard deviation of y. And whenever we do that, we get a value of 0.9618. And since 0.9618 is so close to 1, we know that our linear regression line will be very tightly matched to our data. And now what I'm going to do is jump over and show you how to do all this stuff and write all the code. All right, so hopefully you wrote down the formula for how we're going to create our linear regression line. If you didn't, you can hop back and write it down. Otherwise, I'm just going to write all the code for generating it directly inside here. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do this extremely easy using a whole bunch of Python frameworks. So let's get linear regression. And this is in my statistics. This all those awesome functions we've been building. Well, it's everything's inside of there and it's also inside the resources directory. So this is going to be passed a list of values. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to sum all of our X and Y values. So I'm going to create something called X sum and Y sum. And here I'll show you what values are going to be passed in might make more sense. Okay, so I'm going to have temp sales day list. So what I did was inside of this gigantic list, I have for January, the temperature, average temperature is 37, and the number of sales is 292. And for February, I have an average temperature of 40 degrees, and the number of sales was 228, and so forth and so on. So I have all of that data for each of the month, and this is a multi-dimensional list. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this list down here that just has the average temperatures and the total number of sales in separate lists. And I'll use it to calculate the correlation coefficient to see if everything's going to work. So you see we're going to get a whole bunch of days passed inside of here in a multi-dimensional list over in this function. Okay, so I think you see what's going on here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say for i in range and get the total length for our list that was passed inside of here. And then after that, I'm going to say for j in range. And I'm going to do the same thing for the multi-dimensional part of our list. And there we are. And then I'm going to go and get all the sum up all these values. So all the x's and all the y's. And to do this, I just say args and i and j. And I want to get the first value out. That's where the x is. So there's that. And I'm going to do basically exactly the same thing for all the values of y. So throw that inside of there, throw that there, and just change this to 1. Then after I do all of that work, what I can do is go and get my X and Y bar or my means. So I'm going to say X bar is going to be equal to X sum divided by and args. And they're both going to be the same. So that's going to work. And then I'm going to do the same for get the mean for all my Y values. So just change this to all those values. Everything else can stay exactly the same. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to go numerator and denominator is equal to zero. And I'm going to go and cycle through this once again. Why don't I just copy this? So I'm just going to copy all this stuff right here and go down here and save myself a little time. And I'm going to come in and go, whoops, x sums is going to be equal to args i j o minus x bar and then denominator plus equal to math to the power and we'll have x sums 
divided by two, and the numerator plus equals x sum. See, I'm just modeling out the formula that I showed you before in code form. That's all I'm doing here, which if you've made it this far, you shouldn't have any trouble understanding. All right, and now I can calculate my slope. So slope is gonna be equal to the numerator divided by the denominator. All right, what's up next? Well, I need to get my y-intercept. So I'm gonna go y-intercept is equal to y bar minus and slope times x bar. And now what I'm gonna do is create a multi-dimensional list of x and y values for the regression line with x being equal to all values of x in the past list. So I'll just call this a little uh, line regression, whatever. And list is equal to, and I'm gonna say O times two, four, K in range, length of arguments. And then I can say four, and I'll have this be L in range and length of arguments again, and L. And then I can go in and get my X value by going LR list and M and O is equal to args L, M, and O. Whoops, I forgot to do my other for loop inside of here. Let's copy this, come down to the side of there and make this M and then tab that in. All right, that's good. And then I can also calculate my Y value. So to do that, I go LR list and M and one is equal to convert this into an integer and it'll be y intercept plus, and it'll be slope times arguments and L, M, O. And there we go. I have all of the values for my linear regression list. So I'll return it. I'll go L, R, and list. Good stuff. Oh, and this is going to be length of args. I don't have this part here. All right. All right, now I can jump over and test it. So like I said, I have all of these different individual monthly data pieces here. I can keep these together, just jump down here. And let's go and have this linear regression list printed. And I can say print, and I'll use stats, get linear regression list. And then all I have to do is pass in my list. So I'll say temp sales day list and run it. And if I run it, you can see it comes out, it goes and generates all of the different points for our linear regression list. And now what I can do is use the correlation coefficient formula that we created previously and verify that our regression line is going to be a good fit. So let's call this correlation coefficient and let's go and get that and see if it works out for us. And that's at stats dot correlation coefficient. And all we need to do is pass in this list right here, temporary sales separate list and run that. And whenever we run it, we can see that we get a value of 0.9618. And that means that our regression line is fantastic and it's gonna work for our sample data. All right, so cool stuff. And what I did was I actually went and created a whole bunch of other functions that I thought you guys might find useful. I'm not gonna cover them here because you know this tutorial is getting quite long, but I thought I would give them to you for free. And one of them is going to allow you to generate random lists that add up to a sum. And this is gonna be useful if you wanna create sample data to go and play around with regressions. And another function inside of there is going to generate a random list that will have an average value. And there's a whole bunch of other code only found in the resources directory. Just threw that in there as a bonus. Hopefully you guys can go in there and play around with it and test out this stuff. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.